in 2001, the first iPhone came out. It was $399. If, back in 2001, instead of buying the first iPhone, you had invested those $399 into Apple stock, today, that would be worth $62,000. Wow. That's cool. So I was thinking our favorite new business is MoviePass. If you had invested your, uh, what is it, ten ninety five, fourteen ninety five dollars per month movie pass. I think pass. I only paid $7 something. $7.99? 7 $7.99. If you had invested 10 bucks or so of movie pass mm-hmm. into movie pass stock, right now, you You'd would be... be broke. The latest news on movie pass is that their stock was trading at an all time high of $14 per share. Last Friday, it tanked to seven cents. Yeah. One two hundred and fiftieth of the value. So you know, I had high hopes for Movie Pass. I did, but it never made sense in the beginning how it would work. I mean, they were losing so much money based off of only, even if it's say ten dollars, ten dollars for a whole month, you could see a movie every day, and that's already so ten dollars with our theater of fourteen dollars or so for a movie. Just going once a month already, you're making up that money because it's cheaper. Yeah, from what I understand. The $10 a month pass, it's losing money for them every single one they sell. Mm-hmm. And their hope was just if they could get enough people to, to recognize them. Because they're, they're actually, they were started in 2016. And I think we've only known about it for half All a year or yeah. less. So what do you think is the fate of Movie Pass? Do you think they'll survive? They may be able to, but they're going to have to change a lot. I mean, they've already, I think, said they're going up. I don't know if it's 15 now. Yeah. But apparently they were $50 to begin with when they came out. So they were, I think they're just going to keep increasing. Because, I, I mean, I, I suppose this could have been their idea to put it low, get their customer base, and then they can increase it. And then, you know, they'll get some of their, their money back. But it's just really annoying since they've promised so many things. You, got, you could see any movie you wanted just once a day. You could repeat movies. You could see the big blockbuster movies, and now you can't see the same movie twice. You can't see the big movies. I feel like everything was taken away from me. Yeah, I think they had a great idea, for sure. One of the things I was thinking about is how how many things are moving to a subscription-based models, where you just pay a monthly fee, but it grants you access to you know, whatever the service is. Like, music used to be you bought a CD, or you bought, uh, when iTunes came out, you would buy individual songs, and now it's like you have Spotify, you pay a monthly fee, and you have unlimited access to all the mu- music. And, you know, it makes sense, I think, to move it into movies. But I think whoever is making Movie Pass's decisions, they made a few missteps. And honestly, I think, I think they might be dead in the water. No, I think they'll come back. Here's, but here's what I think. I think that Movie Pass, they had the best opportunity. They had, like, that original market share where it was... At least to me, that was the first one I had heard of to do the movie subscription pass. And they're definitely the biggest or hottest one right now. But I think all they've done is shown that you can do this. There's a way to do this. And they lost their grip on it. And I think somebody else is going to come in and figure out how to do it well. You know, some of the movie theaters now are doing their own version of the passes. And yeah. I think that that is probably more likely to succeed. Because there's a couple of big movie chain, movie theater chains like AMC or Regal, they know that this is something that people will buy depending on what the price is, they'll definitely do it. I'll miss them though, movie pass. They have a really nice card, love the red color. (laughs) Well, it was good while it lasted at least. For all of you that got the $10 pass for 30 movies a month, you, you got your money's worth, so you'll be able to look back on this with fondness. So let's talk about colors. Let's talk about colors. We've turned into an educational podcast for toddlers. Do you know that I used to, okay, I want to say used to, but honestly, it's kind of still current, not know how to mix colors. I honestly must have missed the Blue's Clues episode on how to mix colors and what colors come out of whatever, because I still struggle with that a lot. You're talking about paints? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... Are you now going to test me? Yeah. I should have expected this. Like red and yellow? Green? Really? Blue. Yellow and blue? Green. Okay, that's right. Blue and red? 
Purple. Purple. Okay. So you got the second two. The first one is a <laughs> pretty egregious error. Red and yellow? Green. Green? Blue. Per- orange. 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 I had the th- Red and yellow is such a natural combination. I think blue and yellow is... You know which one I can always get? Red and white. Pink. Okay. Well, congratulations. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I just I missed the episode that taught colors. So yeah, I just try to avoid that now in daily life. Luckily, I don't mix paints quite so often. It's not like a, a life skill that you need to practice daily. But, but it looks pretty bad when, when yeah. someone asks you and you don't have an answer. So previously, we had this conversation about associating places with a particular color. So I was asking you... Do you think that this is a form of synthesia? Is that how you say that word? Syn- I say synesthesia. Synes- but my synesthesia. point Synth- of reference yeah, is a yeah. song. So. Oh man, I'm going to have to delete that part because it's syn- synesthesia. It's not synesthesia? Like Anastasia? No, it's definitely she synes- had it. synesthesia. That's a false. Uh, Anyways, like- this, I guess it's a condition that people have. Basically what happens is you have... When one sense is stimulated in a certain way, you get with it another sense uh, being perceived. So a lot of times the most common example is like uh, a number appears like a certain color in your head. Like the number one is red and the number two is blue, number three is green. But there's lots of different versions. Um, I often hear music is stimulates a certain color yeah or multiple colors um the two two other ones i've heard of were this one was really interesting i've heard somebody had this condition where hearing a certain word evoked a taste in their Ooh, mouth that would be which cool. is really interesting so like you could say a word like furniture and they would say like oh it tastes like mac and cheese Oh, that's weird. And it was really weird. Like I, I. But like, what about if you said mac and cheese? Does that no flavor of mac and cheese in your mouth? It's just if you say furniture. Yeah. So the it words, correlate. the words don't match up. So like the foods, the words for foods won't necessarily taste like those foods. Do you think that they, when they're eating mac and cheese, then they're like furniture, 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 <laughs> to so just they can, like, stimulate double... extra, extra yeah, flavor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They need that extra boost. I don't know. So I heard about that, and I was, I actually tend to not believe stories like that. You're so it, pessimistic about you I'm always... not pessimistic. I'm just skeptical. That's okay, true. Skeptical. I think, I find it hard to believe that like You think somebody, everyone's lying to you. Yeah, I mean, and I, it, it's partially true and I just find it hard to believe that saying a certain word can make you taste chocolate cake. Like that experience is so beyond my experience that it's hard to believe. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't mean that it's impossible it's just that's not been my experience and not even close so it's harder to relate to i try to be open-minded about it and you know what what made me really believe this particular story was the range the sheer range of foods that this guy would taste with different words they gave him like 20 different words and like you would think i don't know if if i was faking it i would i would probably pick like some real popular foods and like maybe some desserts you know because you would pick things that sound appealing to other people, like, look at this cool thing I have, and I can taste chocolate cake when you say this word, and I taste strawberries when you say that word. But this guy was, like, all over the place, and, like, they weren't even all good foods. Like, some were gross foods. Just imagine, like, liver and onions. Sardines. Yeah, he's like, so I, I taste sardines, and I'm like, wow, okay, all right, I'm sorry. I feel bad for you now. <laughs> I feel- the, other, the other case that I thought was really interesting was for numbers, you could perceive them at a different distance in your mind's eye. So, for example, if you think of the number one, the number one appears maybe close to your face, but the number seven appears like sort of off in the distance. Whoa. So the the size of the number correlates with where you see it in space. That's weird. That's a really weird one. I don't ever think of numbers in space. I mean, I guess I do, but I never thought about it that way. And what something that was really interesting with that case as well is that the people that reported being able to do that, not being able to do that, but that the, it happens to, they have better memories than an average person. So like being able to visualize the numbers in space and in different locations, that helped them recall like a string of numbers 
mm. better than an average person who just trying to remember a long number in their head. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Anyways, the reason we were talking about this is because I asked you if you thought this was a form of synesthesia. When I think about certain cities, certain places, I associate those cities with a particular color. So for example, for me, Baltimore, Maryland is a red color, uh, like a deep red. Mm -hmm. And Washington, D.C. is uh, sort of like a slate gray, uh, concrete kind of brutal gray color. I can accept that. So what what do you think? Do you see cities like this? Yes, I agree. I do see cities like this, but I don't agree with your assessment of colors because they're wrong. So what do you think is the right color? Baltimore, Maryland is definitely blue because of the water. The port in the harbor I get makes it blue. I get the logic there, sort of. Unless you're going with red crabs. Is that where your yeah, to red me, is going in? After the color, when I think about Baltimore, I think of like the red brick buildings. I've never seen a red brick building in Baltimore. Yeah, it's not like, it's not inner harbor Baltimore, but it's surrounding area, like residential areas. I think of these like red brick row houses and like Old Bay Seasoning, totally red. But that's just Maryland, not necessarily Mm. only Baltimore. Because in in that... I feel like it was made in Baltimore. essentially in Maryland would be red as well because there's Old Bay there. The DM, any, no, it's, it's not how it works. It's because Old Bay Seasoning comes from Baltimore. That's why Baltimore is red. It doesn't... It doesn't expand its area of influence. Anyways, I think that this is an interesting thing, and I'm actually curious to know if any other people experience this at all. And also, if we can agree upon any other colors of cities. I'm curious if we have the same perception of other cities. So, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, what do you think of? Uh, I'm not... I've only been there once in the airport, so I don't have a good... Oh, no, that's incorrect. I've been there once for a concert as well. But if I had to assign it a color, maybe blue, but a really dark blue. Okay. Almost black blue. Almost black. <laughs> <laughs> Almo- uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not strongly set on that one. I could be swayed. So for me, Philadelphia is a dark green, like a forest green. That's dark green, right? Mm-hmm. But like a dirty forest green so like (laughs) sort of like a mix of like a dark green but like with some gray blended and black not black (laughs) (laughs) i I don't go all the way to black but i don't know if that means that i think philadelphia is a dirty city yeah Um, (laughs) you describe it as a dirty forest (laughs) subconsciously i think no but that's what i see it as is a dark green how about seattle washington seattle is definitely blue What shade of blue? A nice royal blue. Royal blue? Mm Mm-hmm. So like a strong, a solid blue. Mm Mm-hmm. So for me... Or with a little bit of black. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) No, I could see actually being a little bit of a blue-gray. And now you're like, I hate cities. (laughs) Subconsciously, I hate cities. For me, Seattle is like a... I think of a lighter blue, but then I also associate Seattle with like... There's sort of electric green color. Oh, really? And I'm sort of, I, I'm kind of realizing that uh, cities look like their NFL teams to me. Oh, uh, see, I don't have any reference with that. But so, see, for me, Seattle is like a light blue. Maybe again, maybe some gray, but the gray in this case is coming from rainstorm gray, not dirty yeah. gray. And then it's got some streaks of this like electric neon green, which I think fits because Seattle is like a eclectic place. So are you seeing them all as as one color, if that makes sense, with streaks, as you said, in it? Or is it kind of multiple colors swirling together? Seattle is the first one that has multiple colors in it. So like, imagine like a background of a light blue with a bit of the gray color mixed in. Like it's a single solid color, but then there's a bit of streaks of green. Is Seattle one of your favorite cities? Is that why you're giving it more colors? Oh, this is like psychoanalytical. I I wonder <laughs> how accurate this could be about your character. I've only been to Seattle once for about one week. And honestly, I don't think I could tell you that it was my favorite city. It was definitely an enjoyable place to be, but it's not a city that I am constantly dreaming about. You also mentioned San Francisco. 
California? Yeah. What's your color for that? That would be a strong red. So, see, my color is all just anything with the city. So that's because of the Golden Gate Bridge. I'm seeing the red. Okay. Seattle was blue because of rain. Baltimore blue because of the water. So San Francisco, I totally agree with you. The The color I picture for San Francisco is the color of the Golden Gate Bridge. And also, how when you, when you think about it, how does it appear to you? Could you describe it? Yeah. Like, what's your perception? Like, if I say San Francisco, mm-hmm. and you're thinking, you're trying to, like, picture San Francisco in your mind, like, how does the color come into the play? Is Are the letters colored? No. Or is it just a general sense of color? I try to... Th- feel it if that makes sense like I just envision tangibly touching it it doesn't that doesn't make any sense but I don't think of the word the word really doesn't have much to do with it that's why ones that I cities that I know more I can have a stronger opinion on the color because I feel more of what the city gives me what it what what it feels like sure yeah yeah the way that I see it is like if you said the city right now if you say San Francisco and I'm trying to picture it it's almost like in my mind there's like a like a backdrop, mm-hmm. like a stage or like a PowerPoint slide, and the whole background is colored in that color. And then any anything I set into the into the image, it's like ba- the backdrop is the color. Hmm, that's interesting. I can't say that's how it happens <laughs> in my mind, but to each their own. It does. It does feel kind of weird, and I'm not sure even if I'm describing it accurately to the way I actually perceive it but that's kind of how I think about it what about like a a different like a much more out there city maybe somewhere that you haven't even been does it work for cities that you haven't been I was actually thinking of Texas and I was thinking of maybe Austin and I'm feeling a brown (laughs) why are you laughing at that (laughs) like a tan (laughs) yeah like tan brown like like a desert (laughs) yeah it's dusty. It's a dusty <laughs> desert. It fits. I, d- I think of just cowboys. Just the that's just copy pasted I mean, cowboys. I've all never across. been there, but that's what I think Texas is. Just cowboys in in the desert. Austin, Texas, for me, I was gonna say like r- a rust color, so like a reddish mm. brown, maybe a bit faded though. Also more faded than than rust. Get a blend of that like yellow straw color. With the red brown yellow straw yeah you know like burnt grass burnt grass oh, oh burnt oh, grass oh. yellow mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or what about like any international city let's do one or two european cities are there any cities that immediately come to mind with a color let me think of ones i've been to london yeah let's start with london because why not it seems to be the easiest starting London's point. London's hard. I don't have a color. I, d- tell me your color and I can see if I'll agree with it. So my London color, I would say, is like a steel gray. It's like, like Washington DC is gray, but it's like a dull gray. London is a bit more shiny. Uh, it's not mm. quite silver. It's not quite it's polished steel, but it's a little bit more vibrant than, than a Washington DC gray. Mm. Yeah, I'm not feeling it. I'm going blue. <laughs> Your go-to is just blue. blue. Yeah, I'm not certain why that is. Apparently, I really love blue. You're just it's not like, even my oh, favorite color. it's near water. There is water surrounding the yeah. the Well, the I was between red, red and blue. Red Ooh. is also my other go-to color. I think. I really don't see red for London. Not even close. Yeah, that's why I went. I'm thinking that was probably just because of the buses. Let's be real. So, oh, okay. Um, okay. But but At now least... I like when I think when I try to feel it because my first instinct is always the things you know that are iconic and then i try to feel the actual place and then i was gonna go with the blue but we could make it maybe a gray blue yeah i blue is better than red there just needs to be a little bit of more of a bright and more maybe a skyish blue so not okay so we kind of agree we kind of agree it's not straight gray there's some brightness in it there's some other splash of of Mm -hmm. vibrancy i don't agree with all of your colors I totally see where your reasoning, like the red buses, it's like, it's a great reason. It makes logical sense. But I think the second part is where you really hit it on the head, which is that what is the feel of the city? That's, that's what I am thinking of. It's like, Mm -hmm. there's a feeling associated with the color and the city, and I just have to match them up. And if that's the case, they, every place could have a different color depending on what people feel. But it is interesting that some of them line up, even though 
everyone has different feelings. I wonder also, like, the, the cities that we haven't been to or haven't been to very long, I, I imagine, like, those colors will match up really well because we just have stereotypes to go off of. Mm-hmm. Whereas the, the cities that we're really familiar with, that we have very personal experiences with, I'd be willing to bet you could get a wider range there. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, last one, Paris. Oh, see, I do not have fond memories of Paris. <laughs> But the idea was good. So let me think. Let me let me contemplate this. Immediately, I'm thinking orange. But now I'm not certain if that's because I haven't said orange yet and I just want to go for another <laughs> color. I do I do feel that sentiment as well. It's like, I want to branch out. I want more colors. Because I, I do stick a lot with the blues and reds. <laughs> do you, does, does blue come into play for, Fran, or, or for Paris? No. Okay. Me no, neither. I definitely don't. I don't. It, because I think of it as more of a romantic vibe so i'm thinking of a vintage color oh almost like um like a sepia tone as the color mine is you know like a picture of a french cafe Mm -hmm. and it's got like street seating and it's got like a string of those lights those uh outside lights so kind of like the van gogh painting yeah yeah yeah, exactly like that Mm -hmm. that's exactly what i'm thinking of it's like the picture like that the lights are like yellow but it's a warm yellow yeah uh yellow orange color that's the color that i think yeah that's very similar to mine yeah my orangey browny yellowy color but definitely in that family yeah and it's a warm color it's a warm orange yellow Hmm. that's so interesting that that makes perfect sense though because neither one of us has been to paris very long true we only had one day and so not good day (laughs) it goes back down to the stereotype (laughs) yeah yeah which is but it's weird because that's not like London where they have red buses or Baltimore near the water. There's, I mean, the most iconic thing in Paris would be, to me, would be the Eiffel Tower. Sure, which yeah, Which would be yeah. a steel, metal, gray color or something like that. Or even black. I when, don't know. <laughs> when you picture the Eiffel Tower, what, how do you picture it? Is it day or tower. night? Oh, okay. I probably just think of it in the day. Because I picture it at night, so it's lit up. So oh, really? it still fits into my color, yeah. Oh, that's weird. No, I don't think of it then. Uh, maybe that's because when we saw it, it was during the day, so I'm always thinking of that. Now, in terms of colors, do you think about people having colors? I can't say that it's ever consciously occurred to me. Why, do you? Yes. And that's it. <laughs> 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 now, <laughs> this is only people I know, family, family and friends like if someone if it was a stranger or someone that walked off the street I wouldn't be able to tell you their color and some people I think for instance my really close friends they have cemented colors in my mind but if I had to think about certain people I think I could give them I could assign them a color what about celebrities oh no they're not like never... complete strangers yeah good point I always feel very connected to the celebrities um <laughs> But now I don't, I've never thought of it. I, if you gave me one, I could try to come up with one. It would be easier because I know a little bit more. I think I need to have the background of knowing something about the person before just assigning them. Because I do know that for some people, I think they can just see people. But I think that's more of a, an aura thing and reading the colors. You know how psychics or mediums do that where they can read a color on someone. Okay, yeah, yeah. But I, my, I, I but didn't that's, think of that at That's first. not at all how I'm, mine is just from knowing a person, what color do they emulate? to me okay so give me an example what color am i see okay i knew you're gonna ask this question and you don't have a really good fleshed out color of course but only good friends get fleshed out colors <laughs> no it just means you're complex oh okay i can see, I can <laughs> see a couple different colors with you um what's predominant i kind of want to go back to blue right now and i feel like i shouldn't because <laughs> i've gone a little bit too much blue but maybe see i just really like blue it's a steady strong color so you're just picking your favorite color for for everything no because my favorite color is green oh okay and i've not used green and i was contemplating green for you but i'm just uncertain i don't feel like a green person how do you feel about orange orange is an interesting choice what kind of orange uh like a brownish orange now not similar to paris so it's darker rather than lighter yeah it's darker rather than lighter it's not necessarily bright okay 
I'll have to get back to you. I would I'll if, come up if with I had to be an orange, which I would not really want to be orange. It's not my favorite color. I think it would be like a darker, deeper orange than a mm-hmm. like a pale. Because there could be a little bit of red in it. I feel like. Okay. I just know that you would have a strong, steady color. If that makes sense, that it would just be a a bold color, not bright, but bold, <laughs> a deep color. I deep. just. Uh, all of a sudden, I just remembered that we did talk about this in the car before. Yeah. And and this is exactly how the conversation <laughs> went. Yeah. It was like, I could see you as this color, this color, this color, but definitely a dark version of that color. But maybe also, like, white. <laughs> it was every color. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. You haven't... I haven't solidified your color like, yet. Do you see that shadow over next to that tree? It's, like, almost black. I, That's your color. Mm-hmm. But, like, on the other hand, like, the glare off of this windshield... That could also be it. <laughs> we'll have to. I'll have to think some more and, and get an actual concrete. But see, I know it's steady and bold and deep. I'm okay with that. That that sounds pretty good. There you go. Do you have anybody that is for sure fleshed out, set in stone color? One of my friends, I gave her red, and she said, "No, I do not like red." And I said, "I'm very sorry, but you are forever <laughs> red in my head." It's too late. Um, it's like uh, it's like the Sorting Hat in Harry Potter. It's like the person you come up and and Sorting Hat's like. Yo, you're red, and you can be like, I don't feel like red. I feel like blue, and it can be like, All right, you're blue. But I will not. I will not yield. They are red. But sometimes you said sometimes you do. No, not for that. Oh, not for that. No. Okay. Only because those are all they're set. Yours is not quite a set, so I can okay. kind of. I think that's all with colors now. Next week shapes. Oh, I, we didn't talk about months and colors though. Yeah, I'm kind of done with this. So I think that I'm a pretty nostalgic person. I spend more time than the average person thinking about old memories and just being nostalgic in general. And for a long time, I thought that that's like a, a negative personality trait because if you're if you're a nostalgic person, it's kind of like you're stuck in the past and it's quite a bittersweet emotion, I think, if it is an emotion. It's a, definitely a bittersweet, melancholy feeling a lot of the time. Um, because even if it's a good memory, you're kind of thinking back in a wistful sense, like it's not here anymore. Recently, I read this research, this psychology research that's shown that nostalgia is actually can be a really healthy thing for people. And I'm just looking at some of the, the positive effects here. One of the things is that nostalgia can sort of ground your sense of self so it gives you a sense of continuity. You can trace your person, your identity, back to a previous time and say like, oh yeah, I am still this person. Here's how I got from point A to point B. Here are some traits that we shared. And it gives you a sense of, of grounding and of who you are. Then there's a couple of interesting, uh, even more interesting ones. Nostalgia has been shown to counteract loneliness, boredom, and anxiety. It makes people more generous to strangers and more tolerant of outsiders. Couples feel closer and look happier when they're sharing nostalgic memories. That one I think makes perfect sense. On cold days or in cold rooms, people use nostalgia to literally feel warmer. That's almost mind blowing to me. Is that thinking of- How are they doing these studies? So for the cold room study, they literally put people in a cold room and then they prompt people to think about old memories and it's psychology so you rely on reports from self reports from the people mm-hmm. saying like how do you perceive the room and usually from my understanding they don't it's not directly obvious what's going on the people themselves don't realize that there's a correlation between the coldness and their memories and maybe the question of how cold was the room would be like on a survey and you don't know which one is you know the important question that the researchers are studying these are real scientific studies Couldn't you argue that because you're not thinking about the cold, you're being prompted to think about something else, you wouldn't really recognize the cold quite as much? That could definitely be a factor. Plot holes. Hopefully, but hopefully, this one of the things that they would have controlled for. But yeah, according to this research, it says the net effect of nostalgia is to make life seem more meaningful, and people that speak wistfully about their past typically are more optimistic and inspired about the future. So for me, this is great news. Um, I've been looking for some positive side effects of my, of my in dwelling your... <laughs> and ruminating. But yeah, I wanted to see, what, what do you think? Are you a nostalgic person? Do you think about your past 
very often? I would say I think about it in a normal amount. I think more often of the general past because of my field of study. So, you know, not my own. <laughs> so I don't know. As, as a historian. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say that. As a historian. Uh, but it's, it's really funny. One of the points you said was about how couples that reminisce or whatever, again, are, are you know, bonded more. But I just remember reading something, and this was a long time ago. They said something about if you spend the most of your time with a person or with your friends reminiscing, are you really friends because you're not doing things and activities? And yeah. I just thought, I do that, me and my friends do that all the time. Like, we'll just sit for, you know, a couple minutes or half hour. We can even go for an hour and just talk about, oh, do you remember this? And to me, that does not, that's not negative in any way. And I, I could not disagree with whoever said that more because I feel like that's really important in your, you know, background and your to strengthen your relationship with people that you have this shared experience or something like that that you can call back on and reminisce about the times. And I think that that's normal. I think most people do that. So I don't see why that would mean that you're not, I don't know, progressing or anything as friends. I don't know. I, I think that's a great point. I've heard the exact same thing. And it was actually, it's been really, I don't want to say concerning, it's too strong of a word, but it's concerned me in the past that you know, some of my best friends that I don't always get to see anymore as often as I used to, when we do hang out, we often talk about old things, things that have already happened. And I've always wondered, like, are we not connecting because we don't have any sort of anything to relate about now and we're not making new memories? Is this a bad thing? But framed in this way, it's almost saying, like, this is a really good thing. And the people that you're closest with are the people that you're more likely to do this with just reminisce mm -hmm. and that reminiscing itself the act of, of remembering it's bringing you closer together even though you're not doing that activity again mm -hmm. and yeah. I think that makes total sense is it strengthens your relationship to your friends your partner and yourself to remember things about each other I guess before I had said all this did you think did you ever think of nostalgia as a positive or a negative thing? No, not really. Okay. <laughs> I don't think quite as deeply as you do, so it doesn't really cross my mind in terms of if I'm, I don't know, daydreaming too much or thinking too much in the past or anything like that. To me, it's just something sometimes will stimulate a memory and I'll just think about it and I'll be like, oh yeah, I remember that. Or uh, sometimes they're bad memories. I'll be like, oh yeah, remember that. Not so good. <laughs> but I never think, oh, am I doing it too often? Or, But I don't know comparatively how often you do it and you know how often actually anyone does. So I don't know to compare it in that way. But I've not really ever thought of it in, in good or bad terms. It's just kind of existed for me. For me, I think definitely the best description of it is bittersweet. That seems to be the most fitting word to describe nostalgia to me. Actually, I feel like my perception of nostalgia up until I saw this research was overall negative. And so I was a little bit worried about talking about this because I felt like there's a good chance that it would go into like really dark territory, like Hello Darkness, My Old Friend, <laughs> the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's, it's, it seems like maybe it, it is, it can be a positive thing. So I did want to share one of my nostalgic memories I don't want to go into too much detail for, for like privacy reasons of, of myself and others, but I was trying to think of, you know, what are some old memories I have that get triggered every now and then that, that I often think about? For me, one of the strongest triggers is music. So especially if I hear a particular song, an older song, um, it will bring me back to that time period. So I think... A lot of times if you hear some songs that came out, if I hear songs that were released in the summers around college, instantly I will think about that time period of life. And fortunately, you don't hear all those songs all that often anymore because not a lot of them have survived till today. Because if I did hear those songs on the radio all the time, I would like I would constantly be thinking about, you know, college, senior year of college type stuff all the time. I can't even think of a song right now that would remind me. I can tell you my college song. Yeah? I have one, I, now I have multiple songs. Uh, similar to you, music is 
what most triggers feelings of a certain time period or certain things like that. Um, and mine with college, I remember so clearly because I wrote an essay about it in college. And I, I, I uh, showed it to mom and she was concerned for me. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's, uh, it's because I was walking on campus. I was walking down one of the sidewalks and the song was playing and it just for whatever reason triggered a lot of just like thinking about oh I'm in college finally this was freshman year and oh where am I going in life what am I gonna major in what am I gonna do etc cetera, etc cetera. but it was Jumper by Third Eye Blind <laughs> and it stuck with me so much that like I said I wrote it in an essay and the essay was something about why did you want to come to college and I think I wrote in the essay something like oh I just assumed this was the natural next step. So I didn't really necessarily want to, it was just, that's what I'm supposed to do. And for whatever reason, that song just triggered feelings of college, but I wouldn't say they're necessarily bad, even though I don't know if that song, is, the lyrics of that song is necessarily a happy, pleasant song. That's definitely a depressing um, song. But it's weird because it's in my head, it's not framed that way. It's not necessarily a negative, bad song. It's just a contemplative where am I going next in my life song but yeah. it's not it's not it's not really negative and I don't know if it's just because I wasn't really listening to the lyrics of it and I was just more of the feel of it but yeah that's my yeah. college song I I totally agree that the song itself is almost meaningless I'm certain that there's a list of like five to ten songs that represent my summer honestly it doesn't matter what any of them were like probably it was like a party song and that's not at all how I perceive the summer. It wasn't like like going to a frat party. Uh, my perception is just the experience itself and the song reminds me of that particular experience. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, I think about this summer and being able to uh, hang out with people that would end up becoming my closest friends in life. It was at that nice stage where you're friends with people, but you're still getting to know them and you're learning new things about them. And that's almost like more exciting uh, as like every new thing that you learn about somebody, it, it brings you closer together and you become closer friends. For whatever reason, my memory of that summer is that just every weekend was like a new vacation. That's what it felt like. Like one weekend we went to the amusement park and the next weekend we ate a giant pizza that we couldn't even get through our front door. <laughs> And the next weekend, too large. we just stayed up late playing Nintendo 64. And the next weekend, we all sang along to acoustic guitar terribly. And it just felt like every single weekend was this like amazing mini vacation. Ever since that year, I've always thought about that summer as one of the best times of my life. I've mentioned it to people, honestly, so many times that they kind of get annoyed with it like you need to grow up and get over it and it's in the past and you you have to let go of the past at some point so that's why i wanted to talk about this today because i've always been concerned that thinking about some of my favorite memories is living in the past and not moving forward and not knowing like am i am i holding on to something that is just a fantasy that will never come back again I think whoever you're telling this, your friends or whoever, I presume, they just need to come back in the past a little bit with you. Because, <laughs> I mean, I can totally understand why you would feel nostalgic or, you know, have this a best time in your life. And I don't know why they would, unless you're talking about this every day to them, which in that case, I would say pull back a little, <laughs> just a little bit. You know, maybe think you can think why about not? it every day. You can think like about it's the same, it, it's... <laughs> but don't maybe verbalize it. That's all I'm saying. Just pull a little bit. So, but, like, hypothetically, I've been texting them every day about this pull one. Pull back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's me. It's my fault. I'm going, I, mean, I went too far. <laughs> too far, too far, too far. But I think that's a very natural to have a, a, a point in your life where you think that was the best. Because you haven't had your, I mean, there's very much a high chance that you'll have a better year or something that will be even. But of course, you're going to call back to one time where you remember feeling really comfortable, you were happy, everything seemed to be going smoothly. I think that makes sense. And I don't, unless, like I said, unless you're texting or talking every day about it. I'm making a note right now, like, <laughs> stop texting. <laughs> Yeah, make a, put some stars around it. Make sure right. you definitely know not to do that. 
Yeah, I think what happens is that I just, I have that standard set in my mind of like, this is something that can happen. And I always want to chase after that um, and, and catch that feeling again. Even talking about it, I just like notice as we're talking about it, I'm like, this is such a melancholy topic. And I feel like I have to cut out a bunch of stuff because it's like, it sounds depressing to me, listening to me. And that's not the feeling that I'm going for. Well, I do want to mention and put note of the fact that I was not in this story about your favorite time in life. Where was I? You were not in this particular story. So your happiest time is when I'm not around. Was I was I in college at this point? You were in college, yeah. So I was in the, I was on the same campus as you. But it was in the summer. You weren't around. there. Oh, that's that's a good point. I wasn't there during the summer. If you, you were, you could have invited me. Who knows? I maybe I would have come. I don't know if you would have come. I don't know. I, I could have. There was alcohol involved. I'm not sure that you would have been interested. Uh, I was chugging back <laughs> beers by the time I was four. Yeah, like the uh, O'Doul's non-alcoholic beer. Ew, that sounds gross. <laughs> Oh, so I did. I did remember there was one specific thing that I wanted to to tell in the story because um, I know it's being kind of vague about the whole the whole thing. One of the coolest things that happened that summer is that we went to we went to the theme park and which one should I should I say? Oh, what if it locates us. Oh, sorry, I just wanted it for context. But okay, that's fine. You we, can just uh, mime it to me right now, please. <laughs> <laughs> we we went to we went to Bush Gardens for a day. It was great. We rode every single roller coaster and we were there from, you know, like morning till till close, it felt like. And the the coolest thing that happened was that, you know, that ring toss game? Yeah. We played that ring toss game. And now, OK, maybe my memory is, is, is flawed, but in my mind, the story, we had a bucket of rings. There must have been over 100 rings in this bucket. Right. And we're just throwing them and they're bouncing off every single ring. We get one ring left. And my friend just takes that, tosses it in the middle, and it lands perfectly. And he won the grand prize. He won, like, a stuffed animal that was the size of the two of us put together on that last ring. And I, I, I thought when I, was, when I was thinking about this for, for the conversation, I was thinking, like, that, to me, like, encapsulates that summer, that moment. It was like hitting the jackpot on life when you didn't expect anything at all. That was that summer to me. It was like hitting the jackpot on that summer, like knowing that this is like the end of an era. I, like things are going to change at the end of the summer, but like right at the last moment, hit the jackpot. Now I'm going to ask, you know, an economical question here of how did you carry around that thing in the amusement park? Because that never seems like a good idea to me. It's so hot. You have to lug that heavy. I mean, it's not too heavy, but pretty large just around does it go on the rides with you does you, it get its own seat you have no idea how accurate that that is so fortunately this was like one of the last things we did in the day uh was play the play the games but that day it must have been almost 100 degrees outside we're like de- dehydrated sweating like crazy this 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 stuffed animal it's a stuffed dog it's enormous and floppy and just like impossible to carry in a normal way and so we just took turns like throwing it over our heads and just draping it across our, our entire body. So you're just covered oh. by like insulated stuffed animal and just sweating. And it, it felt like, honestly, it felt like it was like 45 pounds. It was so heavy. Of course, that part is the farthest part from the gate. Mm-hmm. So like, mm-hmm. I think honestly, we won that thing. We started walking to the next ride and we're like, you know what? Let's just go. <laughs> it you should have was... left it, man. I would have just... Kicked it to you the wouldn't curb. even kept it? No. What? What are you gonna do with it? A giant stuffed animal? I don't need another one of those. I already got twenty. You have not had a stuffed animal this big. I guarantee. I had you. a really large stuffed pig for a no. while. No, I know what you're thinking of, and it no, wasn't that. Big. It was double that. Size. It was double that. But but still, then what? Where, who kept it, and where do they keep it now? What well, is, my friend won it, so he kept it. Does and he still have it? I no, it died. Because that what an inanimate object died. Well, it was ruined. It, it was so it was so book. big. And this kind of gives you a sense of like how how it was how it was made. He brought it home and used it as a dog bed. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's how big it was. Oh, and well, that's kind of sp- spread out. That's nice. But too. so eventually the dog tore it up. That's why it doesn't exist anymore. Oh. Well, I'm glad it was used though. That's it was good. used. Yeah, yeah. That's good. It was Instead good. of just you know, chucked in a corner or something like that. No, it was functional. Oh, I have a side question for you. Mm-hmm. Something that I thought about when you were talking. Have you ever 
this would have, I guess, been a while ago when you met your friends or anyone, I suppose. But did you ever meet someone and instantly think we're going to be really good friends? Like, do you just had one encounter? Maybe you knew the person before, but you had one day or time or something with them and you thought, yeah, I really like this person. They're going to be they're going to be my friend. Do you have a story for this? I have an in. Yeah. I mean, not it's not really a story. I just there is one friend in mind that I'm thinking. Okay. Of. So this is something this is something that doesn't happen very often. I don't usually get a sense of a person right from the moment I meet them. Mm-hmm. One time in my life, I think I met someone and knew instantly that this was going to be my best friend for for a long time. And it happened in high school. Actually, I think I met him in eighth grade. And from high school throughout college, that was my best friend. And we lost touch a little bit after that. But like, I still consider that person to be my best friend. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like he's a person that's just on the same wavelength as me. Mm-hmm. And that if circumstances were different and we lived in the same city, we would be best friends. So was there a moment in high school when you met him that you thought of that? Or was it just... Because I think for the most part, how I've, with other friends, I you just kind of, it, to me, they sneak up on you. Like, I can't pinpoint an exact time or date or something like that when the friendship started. Sometimes I can think of a certain, say, for instance, friends in high school. Oh, we had this class together and then we started to become closer friends. Um, so for me, it's not often that I can think of a specific date or time. It's more of just a, they kind of creep up on you. With this particular person, I do have, like, a particular memory, like... Now, this was 15 years ago now, so the memory might be... Oh, you're old! (laughs) The memory might be very wrong at this point, but I have a memory of a friend introduced me to this person in 8th grade, and in my memory, it's like a generic classroom setting, and, and he introduced us to each other, and that moment is when I pinpoint, like... I knew we were going to be friends. That was the end of eighth grade. So I didn't really hang out with him until the following semester in high school. Uh, But I want to say that we had a class together like the very first year and that kind of started things. I will tell you, on the other hand, there's been a couple of people, two of my closest friends right now, the first time that we met, uh, that would have been when I was in college, like junior, senior year of college. The first time that we met, we didn't get along at all. You hated them. In fact, like I've talked to I've talked to one of my friends about this and, and we both agree we met each other and neither of us liked each other. My perception of him was, you know, as this like aggressive and arrogant, almost like a jock type. Mm-hmm. And his impression of me was like this goody two shoes, not fun and boring guy. And we ended up becoming best friends after that. Uh, and realized that our perceptions were just totally off from the start. Oh, that's really cool. So don't trust your instincts, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't say that's ever happened to me. So what? What's your? What's your uh, personal experience? Oh, Did you? Could you pinpoint a, a particular yes, moment? Just for one person, it was in high school, and this was a person I I knew of and was friends with friends I already had, but we hadn't really hung out really closely I guess and we weren't in any really classes or anything like that together but there was a fundraiser going on at I think it was Wow Wings or something which I don't even know if they exist anymore. I've never heard of that place. Yeah I I don't think it exists but there was a fundraiser going on and my friend who could drive because I could not drive it took me quite a while to learn how to drive but anyway I digress. Anyway my one friend who could drive she drove me and then picked up this person Um, And we drove there together and it was, I remember we didn't really talk much in the car, but when we got there, we sat next to each other. I think just how the seating arrangements worked out. And I just thought she was really funny and she could really give back what I, because I'm a pretty sarcastic person for the most part. And we like picked up on it really quickly. And my, actually my relationship with her now is very similar where I just kind of this sounds terrible, but I put her down a lot, but it's really in like a jokey, funny kind of way. And I think she likes it, hopefully. I guess I'll find out if she says, <laughs> if she listens to this and tells me, please stop doing this. Um, I don't need, she probably doesn't even, I, I'm honestly, the friend I'm talking about, she probably doesn't even know this is about her because she's, she's a really bad memory as well, but <laughs> she probably just doesn't even remember this experience. Like this person um, has never heard of you before. Yeah, she doesn't they're like, 
uh, uh, who are you? That's, you're like you're like sorry? stalking this like, person. Uh, we've we've been friends for eight years. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we so we sat at the dinner and we talked. And I remember driving in the car back home, and I don't remember if it was after we had dropped her off or she wasn't in the car. But I remember telling my other friend and also telling my mom, telling her that I was this is a. I really liked her. We, like, really hit it off. I think we'll be really good friends. And we have, since that day, been friends. I think. I don't know. Like I said, I'll have to ask her. It's a one-sided <laughs> friendship. I like to believe that this is, like, either an imaginary person or, like, somebody that does not She's been trying to get rid before. of me for, like, eight years. She's like, got this girl. And it's like, can't. you're just, like, staring out your bedroom window, like, like, like writing in your diary about her, like, watching her. <laughs> but it was just, it was, it's... It's neat because it's the only instance I can remember where just one outing with them and I like instantly knew that we were on the same wavelength and we just fit well together. So like I said, any other ones before I've just kind of gradually, I think, become friends and yeah, I couldn't pinpoint the time, but yeah. I believe that things like that are really rare. I'm always very appreciative when it happens. 